welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week we are talking about the This week we are talking about the 2001 romantic comedy Two Can Play That Game with our guest Bria. Welcome back, Bria. Hello, it's nice to be back. Like in many ways. <laughs> too, but... <laughs> so if you want to get to know Bria a little better, pause, check out their trailer, and come on back. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. housekeeping. That was not. <laughs> I never know. Yeah. <laughs> If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here are a few ways that you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? Make sure that you head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, iHeartRadio, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and hit that like button and leave us a review or oh, follow. We- we do have a review this week. Fun Yay. podcast. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> Fun podcast while I walk the dogs. Five nice. stars. Yay. If you are looking for a fun, entertaining listen, this is your podcast. Being Gen X, I love the movies they discuss. And despite there being a lot of humor, and there is a lot, they really give thoughtful and knowledgeable critiques from Eric Retton via Apple Podcasts. Thanks, Eric. Oh, thanks, Eric. And if you like what you hear and want to buy us a virtual cup of coffee, head on over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees. And if you want to buy some no more late fees merch, you can check out our Redbubble store at no more late fees dot redbubble dot com. Let's dive in. Jaggy, tell us about two can play that game. I talked to some someone today and they said they did they've never they never heard of the movie, never saw it. Were they black? Uh, Yes. <laughs> but they're not into rom-coms, so mm-hmm. maybe. So yeah. bef- before I have the summary that is presented before me, I was on IMDb like you do while you're watching a movie. And I sent Danielle a screen cap of one of the summaries on IMDb along with this note. A man wrote this summary. So this is the <laughs> one, the first one that comes up on IMDb. An arrogant career woman plays a series of heartless mind games with her boyfriend to put him in line, only to discover that he has a few tricks up his own sleeve. I just want to know, and Jackie's going to get into this, but this man, this movie was written by a man. Yes. Final stop. Yeah. <laughs> so the movie follows Shante Smith, a successful advertising exec, who discovers her boyfriend Keith is cheating on her. Instead of breaking up, Shante decides to enact a 10-day plan of revenge and manipulation to teach him a lesson and win him back. However, things take an unexpected turn when Keith realizes what's happening and begins to play his own game. It stars Vivica A. Fox, Anthony Anderson, Wendy Raquel Robinson, Tamala Jones, Monique, Bobby Brown, Gabrielle Union, and Morris Chestnut. It was directed and written by Mark Brown, and you can currently watch it on Prime. But before we start, let's get into our ratings. Let's get into our ratings rewind. So, you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then, at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Trash. Straight up trash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bria, we'll start with you. What is your Y2K rating of this movie? Probably would buy it. Would buy it again. Jackie? I have never seen this movie. And I would say would buy it because I own it. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to even lie. I just alph- alphabetized all my movies again. So I'm aware that I have that one. 
All right. So this movie had a budget of $13 million. Now, at the time, it is important to understand that the Sony-owned Screen Gems at this time was starting to, like, make a ton of Black movies. So I, be I think between Screen Gems and Lionsgate, they were really the ones making a lot of the Black movies at this time. Probably New Line Cinema. And New Line, yeah. <laughs> if you see New Line, you know it's a Black movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Friday when I see this. Because <laughs> before this movie, they had done The Brothers, with mm -hmm. who, which also starred Morris Chestnut and Gabrielle Union. So they had just came off of that movie. And, um, and isn't Tamala in that too? Yeah, she is. You're right. Tamala is also in The Brothers. I mean, brothers. The budget is was thirteen million dollars, and it made twenty two point thirty nine million. So it was a success. It was a hit for them. Surprisingly, it opened at number two at the box office, raking in about seven million over seven million dollars in its opening weekend behind The Musketeer, which I think is funny because I feel like this movie has more legs than The Musketeer does. Like I don't Even think know what that movie is. exactly. <laughs> Exactly. The, the film was released in the UK on September 13, 2002, and it failed to reach the top 10. Not surprised. It's the UK. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when this movie came out because I was in college. A lot of these movies came out when I was in college, and then they just were a breeding, a, a breeding ground of conversation. When I saw this movie, I thought, because I was very green when it came up to dating, I was like, oh, this is it. <laughs> Shantae is, tell, Shantae is telling us what we need to do. You were taking notes for real. For real. <laughs> I like, I you were like, like Wendy Raquel Robinson's character. You were like, yes, my girl's trying to take notes. All the things. It's so... Oh, so not the route to like I wasn't bold enough to be doing half of the stuff that she talks about and I'm too lazy to play so many games like I was yeah. like after she got that was like 10 10 days girl I'm tired I'm, I'm not, <laughs> you're doing a lot you're That's doing why a I'm lot. not dating at all because <laughs> it's just like why why even bother with all these shenanigans like I, I'm I don't have time. <laughs> I, look, what I think is crazy is like my mom and my godmother and people and, and who are like 20 plus years older than me are still going through this bullshit. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. They're telling me stories and I'm like, wait, what you're telling me is that this shit still isn't getting any better? These motherfuckers can barely live right now like <laughs> aren't they old i mean the way i hear my mom like kind of argue with her boyfriend about like the stupidest stuff like you didn't call me back when you said you would and you and i'm like really at your big age this is what we're mad about <laughs> shouldn't we be grateful we have another day like i i do have a lot of hope that there i really do believe that there are men who what they they just like you they just want to be around you they like you as a person and they show it like you don't have to do all these crazy jump through hoops things i believe that now it took me a long time to get here i don't know who this bitch is but she thinks that this is real that there are decent men still alive not trying to trick you to take care of them I think there are for other people, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I well, we'll we'll see how this year turns out. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the casting director, Robbie Reed, named a list of folks who might they might want to consider for the role of Keith. And Morris Chestnut was at the top of the list. Originally, Vivica Fox had turned down the role of Shantae three times. She stated she didn't like the initial script. She said, I didn't like Shantae. She was like, you know, the way that it was written, she was just such a bitch. And I didn't like it. And some of the language, I didn't like her relationship with Keith. And so I just said, nah, it's not what I want to do. So I know that they rewrote it. She talked a lot with Mark and they got Shantae to a place that 
she felt was good. She also felt like she needed not just Shantae, but all the female friends, Keith, like she wanted Shantae and Keith to be equals and to both be very strong and just for it to make sense. Not it, like they're really playing a tit for tat versus like Shantae is just dragging Keith. And also mm-hmm. when they were hiring Morris, they needed to make sure that they found someone that could be like, quote unquote, a manly guy and not like kind of wussy. Yeah. <laughs> because when she started to, to start playing the games that he wouldn't like kind of fumble or look weak, I guess. So, yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. I'm very, very curious as to what the script looked like after before they made, before they made these changes, because it was already yeah. a wild ride. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone else but Vivica in this role, too. Like, me either. That's how much, like, Shantae. Like, I feel like this is low key, like, one of, if not her most iconic role, I, you know, that she owns. Yeah. Sometimes when we do, especially Black movies, we don't find like a lot of fun facts, but we, we were able to because they did like an interview, I think 10 years after with the entire cast and um, I said BuzzFeed, right? Mm -hmm. So they were able to like ask them a bunch of questions and it's funny, like Gabrielle Union, every single person, even though they've had bigger roles, they say this movie is one of the movies that people know them for. And Gabrielle Union was saying like, it's really funny because I thought at the time when this came out, like people would have known me for other things and sometimes like a white kid will come up and they're talking about this movie she's like what (laughs) that would shock me too i'm like not bring it on (laughs) (laughs) and so yeah like i think it's because when you because you did love love and basketball with us Oh, and yeah. you, when you talk about that and Love Jones, those aren't necessarily like typical rom-coms. And even The Best Man isn't necessarily a rom-com. I would say this is like one of the few rom-coms with a Black female prote- protagonist. Is that the right word? Yeah. Per- yeah. Right. Protagonist? Right. Yeah. That we have. Because I can't really think of one where it's a rom-com with the comedy part to it. Deliver Us from Eva. Yes. But but I think this one came out first. Yeah, it's few and far between for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. It's like the only other one I could think of, I think. Yeah, like I... Because if you think about... like the Think Like a Man's, like the Paula Patton era. Right. Like... Yeah, and all of wow. those came because of of this movie essentially. Yeah, and also, if you if you think about it, we had like comedies that had to do with with sex comedy. <laughs> essentially, yeah, like yeah. booty call, yeah, booty call. <laughs> <laughs> From oh, what's the one you? How to be a player? Yeah. We did have woo. And I know a lot of us tried to pretend (laughs) because it was so... She had great outfits. It was a (laughs) rom-com. But I think this was definitely different. So got to give Vivica her props for real. Yeah. No, she's definitely deserving of flowers for sure. I do. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I love that Halle Berry, when she won her Oscar for Monsters Ball, she, you know, named a list of other Black actresses and she named Vivica. And I thought that was really good. Like, I was like, all right, I like that. Because Has Halle been in a rom-com? I she mean, was a boomerang, but like led one. I'm surprised that I feel like she would have came first. She her. should have. But- yeah. No, I don't think so. Not that I can think of. I made BAPS. Yeah, it's kind of a rom com. Yeah. Dating. And yeah, that's true. She was in this movie called Bullworth, but I don't even know what to call that one. Yeah, that's I've never of... seen that. Yeah, that's all over like the place. An avant garde comedy almost. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Beatty. That was. Uh, that's an hard time period, Jackie. <laughs> so 
starting off with this movie, it's good to know that one of the two movies that Mark Brown said were like his inspiration, because this movie breaks the fourth wall a lot. Like, yes, it's giving Zach Morris, it's Ferris Bueller and Alfie. Alfie so he she's breaking the fourth wall talking us through the situation and she's introducing us to all of the characters in her life starting with her wonderfully interesting charismatic insane girlfriends and she starts talking about like why men are constantly acting the fuck up especially around spring she she calls them humping ass dogs (laughs) Oh my god. I love the talking to the camera part. That's like one of my first that's my first bullet point is like how iconic that is because it's like all these one liners that Vivica delivers are so like, you know, capturable, gifable, you know, put it on TikTok or whatever because of that. Yeah. So I love that part of that. But and yeah, she-, she definitely says some wild stuff. <laughs> She says that this movie is probably the closest out of all her characters you're going to get to her personality. And like just the way she wanted to bring that sassiness to Shantae. And like, you know, she even talks about some of the outfits. Like she says she clashed with the the costume designer lady about some of the outfits. She says she even paid for that yellow suit that she's wearing that yellow suit is everything (laughs) she paid for it herself (laughs) she's like girl i just got a new american express and i went and i got it (laughs) and she her friend told her to get it tailored she's like because that suit's not gonna do anything for your ass the way that it is i think that dress that she goes to see keith in is a versace dress like the outfits were outfitting like hell in this movie Can we talk about the natural booty of the 2000s? Because yes. when she's in the elevator and the white guy is like, <laughs> and, and you, you're so used to great seeing butt, a BBL, saying, but yes, yes. It's like it's so just normal size, like a nice <laughs> little handful, and that's it. And like, and I think Keith talks or like Anthony Anderson's character is like, and she got a fat ass, like, and like fat asses. We're a different standard back then. Right. And I kind of miss it. <laughs> Even yeah. when he's talking about Gabrielle Union's big, big boobies, I'm like, okay. Gabrielle Union has never had big boobs, <laughs> ever. She has more of like, An you know. A, like build. Yeah, but she's more, I would say more like pear shaped in the sense that like she has more hips and a little yeah. bit of a mm-hmm. butt and compares like, it's proportionally to her. Yeah. Yeah. right right so just like we just saying shit we just saying shit because and man wrote this movie remember yeah, yeah. yeah. but is he a gay man because i don't understand i think he just wanted them to say shit he I was guess. like yeah okay we didn't cast someone with a fat ass let's roll with it okay but i guess to hollywood standards yes that is yes. what white people might consider a fat ass but in the black community we're like mm. Okay. Yeah, I hate to bring it to this, but that's why J-Lo got so much hype about her ass at that time. Because yeah. to white standards, people were like, oh my God. And like, every time as a kid, I heard black women talk about her. They were like, she not as special. <laughs> like, you see these wagons in this barbecue right now? <laughs> Yes, definitely not. I mean, she look, she's kept it up in the sense that yes. like gravity she's been working her literally working her ass off i will have to say one of the i think best kept secrets or the thing that beyonce works has always tried to work really hard at for some reason especially like in the i'm talking about 90s 2000s mm-hmm. was hiding how big her butt was yeah but like that's why she, she wrote bootylicious yeah but she still was not like she yeah. was always standing to the side she, yeah, it, yeah. it's not till like more recently now that i think she just yeah. like lets it be even janet jackson like yes she's someone when you look at 90s janet you don't realize like how big her butt was because yeah. of that like they did a good job of hiding it or whatever it wasn't a focal point because it wasn't really an asset so to speak yeah in the, in the way that it is now where like more than likely people are posing ass first <laughs> and stuff <laughs> but but later on like especially like in her 40s and stuff mm-hmm. when she 
definitely got way more comfortable like showing off way way more especially I know she talks about being with Jermaine Dupri really like helped her with that but like you know I feel like a lot of people were like damn I didn't know Janet had ass like that like <laughs> Oh, the hidden asses of the 90s and 2000s. <laughs> That's a good uh, side. Like, make some content on that. <laughs> and Who play was hiding ass music in the 90s? Is... <laughs> Just bootylicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what else is going on, Danielle? Oh, we do meet. So we do meet Karen, Shantae's friend, who is staying with her because her... Bobby Brown, <laughs> which Those... I did not know. I was like, he looks oddly familiar. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> yeah, Michael. Uh, those teeth at the beginning. <laughs> the prosthetics were terrible. Oh. Let's be honest. <laughs> and you know, like I don't think there are many celebrities that hurt my soul as much as like Bobby Brown was such a handsome guy back in the day. Like yeah. Bobby Brown was that that dude for real, and I don't. I think the, like the Whitney and him, and they don't like a lot of people don't get it, and they overshadow. Like y'all don't know, <laughs> y'all keep playing in Bobby fucking Brown's face, and he was that dude for a while there, man, yeah. and. Because him in A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, like, I remember watching that as a kid, but I also, like, watched it as an adult, and I was like, Bobby Brown's kind of fine in this movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was he was still, like, you know, good looking around that time. Yeah. He hadn't gotten the, like, weird jaw tick thing he has, like, but, yeah, he was, he was something to behold. He was. Uh, it's, it's a tragedy. And now, you know, I see him with New Edition and he is huffing and puffing on that stage. But I give him props. He's trying. That's all I can say. And he's say. been through so much and yeah. survived a lot. Like, so, yeah. But, yeah, he looked still semi-decent in this movie. But, yes, he had prosthetics because the whole idea is that Karen has, she met Michael. At, he was, oh, He's a mechanic. A mechanic, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she went to go get her car fixed. She saw the potential. So tip number <laughs> one, don't find the potential. No. Do not fix her up, okay? Like, because what will happen is he will look in a mirror one day, realize he's looking like hot ass, and start acting as such. When I'm not going to lie. Dudes who are hotter know that they can get more chicks and act the fuck up <laughs> it is the facts of the matter right now so michael started acting up karen was upset because of course shantae had to step in and say i'm gonna put you on this 10-day plan mm -hmm. to get him in in shape because Line. he yeah he stopped trying he stopped talking about marriage he was like not moving forward but I think the other thing that really hit me while watching this movie is, ladies, if you have girlfriends that are giving you relationship advice and are not telling you about their life, mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. relationship, nothing, you know nothing about their situation, weird, like... What, yeah. what what are you doing why is it but that, that was one of her rules at one point too. it is one of her rules but like French like I'm not saying you have I I do agree that you really shouldn't tell your friends everything especially when a dude does some fucked up shit in a sense that like you have gotten in your heart to forgive them yeah. because me I'm not forgiving them I'm remembering and I'm yeah. hating you and mm -hmm. that yeah. like puts you in a rock and a hard place when your friend, especially as your best friend, I'm sure Jackie knows I'm crazy. So don't tell me. Don't do, yeah, don't do that, it. <laughs> that's a hard position to be in. And it's like, you know, you, you're around these men eventually. And in your head, you're just like, I know you ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the sucky part too, is that, 
I try to always think even when my friends are telling me like the negative things, like keep in mind and have perspective that I don't know all the amazing stuff and obviously the intimate stuff and the small moments and all those things. When you look at him, whatever you feel or whatever initially made you fall in love. So I have to keep that in mind that this person also has a different view of this person than I do. All I'm seeing is like, you said he said this to you? And now you <laughs> So yeah. I, I also just think like, I know that we are in a modern time and that things have gotten better when it comes to gender roles per se, and even men's ability to understand that women are actual people. Because there are a lot of men who really don't even think that that we are in service to them. So I think there's been a lot of strides in that. But I also think that so many women, in order to be in a relationship, have made contingencies or have made compromises to be in those relationships. Like they have chosen that, yes, this isn't maybe the I most ideal, but I love this person or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I This is why I'm still single because I have not met that person that is making me want to make those contingencies yet. Yeah, yeah. To be like, okay, I'm going to overlook this. So I think Listen, a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shantae <laughs> said something very early on that I was like, relevant. <laughs> it seems like every woman I know is having man trouble. Like, when people ask me why I'm single, I'm like, I I know like maybe two people who are in happy relationships. And that's probably because I don't know that much either. But like at the same time, like I'm just like, yeah, there's not a lot around me that looks that appealing. <laughs> like, you know, everybody's in the trenches in my eyes. So I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I don't I don't need that. Yeah. And like you said, there's there hasn't been someone that you felt like you know, I'm willing to look, for me at least, to look stupid for occasionally to take that <laughs> chance. With, like, you know. Well, yeah, that's also the hard thing. Like, you ain't gonna be making me look like Boo Boo the Fool out in these streets. <laughs> but yeah, I, there's a lot. I, I don't know. But I think that it's true that you should keep some things to yourself. But Shantae with her friendships it's almost like she's purposely friends with people that she can be higher than or she's one of those maybe she's a fixer you know she likes right. troubled like lisa vanderpump you know she likes <laughs> to be amongst the troubled people who like you know she can give her two cents to and still feel like you know I'm better than kind of in a way. Yeah, that's weird. You need therapy because you should <laughs> want to be with friends that you are like equally yoked with, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. Not everyone's going to be like everyone's going to be at different places at different times, like financially, spiritually, in their love relationships. That's fine. But like if all of your friends like – let's say you want to go on a cruise and none of them can pay for it. Like it's time to get new friends. Like y'all are not in the same place anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's not well, working. It's even like, like I know in my friends groups, it's like really important that I surround myself with people that lift you up instead mm -hmm. of just like talking shit all the time. Like we talk shit, yeah, yeah. but like with each other, we're like, no, that looks amazing. Or and we can be honest, but we're honest in a kind way. But it's yeah. like when the, when you're having the hard days, those are the friends you want to say like, hey, I'm having a really hard day. And their response is like, it's just a day. You're amazing. Tomorrow will be better. You know, like those are the people you want to surround yourself with, not just people who have issues and just are constantly complaining about their lives. Yes, or it's only about them and exactly. they never ask about you or like yeah. a big thing I learned this year. And I think your 30s, like, which another thing that's crazy is she's 28 in this movie. <laughs> I, I was, was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Where? Because he played in my face. <laughs> I know Black that, don't crack, but we know that you were no damn 28 in this movie. Right? 
<laughs> that's like when I, I rewatched Waiting to Exhale for New Year's and I was like, Whitney's supposed to be like 33, 34. What? Like, it's just, <laughs> yeah. But a big thing I've learned now that I'm in my 30s now is recently is, like you said, to build off of that, Jackie, is having those friends that you can also that hold you accountable mm. too and like you can have hard conversations with and they can tell you no actually I don't think you're right or I don't think this is like the best choice for you and having that understanding like I and having those conversations of like I need you when you see something you say something like yeah. kind of thing and like you know because I think it's real a lot of friends and friendships fall apart because we're afraid to hurt each other's feelings. Yeah. And so you start holding stuff back because you're like, I can't tell her that or I can't say this to her. And I think I finally like have grasped that like, oh, like no one can read my mind. Like no one can like you want people to know why you're upset. But also at the same time, like other people got other shit going on. So it's like, mm -hmm. no, I don't know why you're upset. Please enlighten me <laughs> like and um but yeah like to have those friends that you can definitely you know pour into and then when the time is needed they can pour back into you whether that's yeah. negative positive or you know just like hey we both in the trenches together <laughs> like <laughs> and Shantae yeah. I don't think that kind of friend She's like, ooh, girl, that sucks for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a scene that if we skip ahead a little bit, there's a scene when all the girls go shopping. And so I don't think I noticed probably the first few times I ever saw this movie back then. But, you know, Monique being a plus size woman and that like her friends are almost like making fun of her while she's shopping. They're not taking and she calls them out like she she jokes about stuff. But yeah it's almost like they are looking down at her, you know? Yeah. So you have, you have Karen who has like hero worship of, about Shantae. Then you have, let me make sure I get her name right. Then you have Deidre who kind of looks like she, she's cool with Shantae, but like, are they frenemies? Cause also there are moments where she's like you're full of shit but it's I don't even know if it's <laughs> frenemies I think Deidre's probably a better friend than Shantae is because she's keeping it above yeah like mm -hmm. she's keeping it real yeah. with her and then Tracy's kind of like in the middle and I mean we do we eventually get to meet so we met Karen situation we meet Tracy she Shantae goes over to go pick up Tracy and Tracy is at her boyfriend's house and she has now decided she knows that he's got a roaming, ro roaming eye. He's a cheater. And so she does a trick where she takes a pair of underwear and Shantae says the key is that you have to get a pair that cannot fit you. They're either too big or too small and hide them somewhere in the house and then say that you found them. If he's already cheated, he probably don't even remember if, yeah, he, you know. Shantae also says that if you are going to be cheating, go to the other woman's house. Or if you're cheating, go to your girl's house so that she's not fucking up your shit because Tracy goes to him and starts breaking stuff. I would like to say out of all the women, Tracy is the healthiest. She crazy. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. She's crazy, <laughs> but he cheats. On I don't know what happens later, but in the whole movie, he cheats on her. They it looks like they break up and she's done. Yeah. None of these I would say 10 day Deidre's games. kind of low key healthy too, but we'll get Deidre's to that. Deidre's got, but so we, uh, let's roll she's up. She's self aware. I, I'll give her that. <laughs> so. She's self aware, but she's still, she's got this dude in her house with all his friends and his she's goals. She's stigmatized. She like, is stigmatized. She <laughs> um, has no um, money, no, no job. job. Mouthful of gold, but Mouth, no money. <laughs> no money. <laughs> so I, you know, not happy about that. You know, the panty thing. I feel like if I'm going to that like step, what are we doing? I'm not doing that. Like, right. just bye. I, I she can have you. They can have you. So I do think that like what you want in your life you should make sure some your friends 
that you surround yourself probably have that that same thing. If you want to be married, if that's what you really want, or if you want to be in a healthy relationship, you should uh, probably have a good amount of married friends or people in relation healthy relationships. Because if all of y'all are suffering, it's not working. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good luck finding that. I mean... <laughs> Uh, and two, I, I mean, you can't, you don't make friends like, I mean, <laughs> I learned a lot about making friends recently, but like you don't make friends and you're like, so how's your relationship status? How healthy on a scale of one to 10? Like a lot of times not... you make friends and then later on you get to know their spouse and then, you know, trust and stuff and they start telling you stuff and you're like, damn, like I would have thought you guys were great or like <laughs> that everything was cool or you have friends and then they meet their significant other and then you're initially it starts great and then eventually the same thing. You're like, I thought you guys were doing great. I didn't know everything was like, you know, yep. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I agree. I'm not saying that like you have to make all your friends that way, but I think you should have some balance, right? Like yeah. if you're single, but you want, because what ends up happening too is that like, if you end up getting into a relationship, you end up trying, hanging out with people and other in relationships together. Because let me tell you, as a single friend, there's nothing worse than being with all of your friends with like boyfriends. Like, I don't want to hang out with y'all. I don't, I don't yeah. want to do it. It's just like, I want to go hang out with single friends. Or like, I love that I have some married friends that I barely even know where their husbands are. Sometimes I ask one of my friends if he's still alive, <laughs> just to check. Because you're being a good friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm checking on that dude all the time. Yeah. That's I, you know? <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> you know what's what was weird for me was meeting like the husband's friends whose wives became friends to your friend like that that was a little wild to me because I was like oh wait like this is a lot of coupling and like you all are always like or doing together. stuff together like that's a next level that's like couples retreat level stuff <laughs> and i was like i'm definitely not going on those trips ken and i learned that we had to make this work <laughs> she well, was thing. not giving it up no <laughs> and i was like y'all were next door neighbors you work this shit out and i'll move back but you got half an hour <laughs> i was like oh Ken's coming. Okay. <laughs> He's still here. He's still here. This is still a thing. So You're moving. Oh, okay. And it, it, I don't think it like the Ken thing didn't really affect me at first because I had moved to New York and you were away. I was away. But then I was like, wow, this is like real. I started getting cards with pictures of them on it. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I was like, and I in a relationship. <laughs> I think and I didn't go to I didn't visit Austin for a while. And it was like it wasn't until Jackie turned 30 that I finally went. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I've I gotta, been here for yeah. like four years <laughs> mm, yeah in my defense I was extremely broke at for yes. a while there like money was tight couldn't be taking no trips well when you're running a free blog <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so yeah that 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 was an adjustment yeah yeah Hello everyone, my name is Ben Groves. And my name is Rob McFarlane. And together we are the Every Movie Ever podcast. We've always found refuge in movies. We love them all, from sci-fi, horror, to Oscar winning drama, and so bad they're good B-movies. Each of us has had major mental struggles. I'm sober. I should be. Trauma. Mental breakdowns. And to make sure that we checked in with our best mate at least once a week, we started the Every Movie Ever podcast. Join us as we survey the worst movies in the world and the cinematic gems that you may have missed. So, whether you're a fan of Batman or Billboards, Godzilla 
or guard level writing. We've got episodes done. And hundreds to come. Nick Frost says we can't do every movie ever. But we'll show him some fried f***ing gold. Find us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere else. Click the link in our bio to find us. Consume. Consume. Did that sound good? Let's try it. Hey, this is Danny Drew. Hi, my name is Kind. Dave Dan. Sheridan. The Every Movie Ever Podcast. Yeah. So where are we? Panties. So we, yeah, we met Tracy. Yeah, yeah, We've, yeah. <laughs> we, I told you about Deidre, Deidre. And then we are introduced to Keith because she pulls up in her red Jaguar. Mm-hmm. Don't know what so anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and in her yellow, oh gosh, I don't know if it was prod. I, I have to look up what the designer was. This is the one that she paid for on her own. Anywho, so she pulls up to Keith's job to go see him and they have a full on quickie. And we meet Anthony Anderson's character, Tony, who is kind of peeping the situation that they're about to go have sex. What I find disgusting is after Shantae leaves, Tony comes into uh, Keith's office and his office is all disheveled and Tony starts sniffing as he walks in yeah. and he's like, <laughs> I, like, it's like, why? Did oh my God. <laughs> right. And as a gentleman, I guess for a while, he tries to, pro- you know, protest like, yeah. oh, no, no. But eventually he he says he does. I do like that they give him an intro that rivals his intro, um, Morris Chestnut's intro into The Best Man. Like, mm, you know, yeah. the song that plays, they show all of his accolades, you know, because she's yeah. boasting about her man in comparison to her lowly friends and their loser boyfriends. Keeps a, a good man. You know what's crazy is I feel like Morris Chestnut in The Best Man and then maybe a little bit in this movie it's like if Ricky never got shot. Yeah, and he is <laughs> he is Ricky. Yeah, he's like the golden boy, like yeah, constantly. And like, in brother in in brothers as well. The brothers is more blurry for me than the best man. I've seen that a lot more, but yes, yes. <laughs> what I do want to read though is because Vivica and Morris Chestnut used to be on a TV show. I think it was ninety two. It was called Up All Night, and it had it starred Patti LaBelle as well. It lasted one season, but it always sticks in my brain. I always remember that show for some reason. And side note, going back, it was a yellow Versace suit that she had custom tailored. 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 Mm-hmm. And that, like I said, the other dress that we see later is also, I think that dress she has is Versace as well, so... Vivica looks real damn good in Versace. Maybe I'll one day I don't know how too. I look in Versace. So Vivica said, I did a sitcom years ago called Out All Night with Patti LaBelle. When we first did the show, Morris had just come off Boys in the Hood and he was still kind of young, still kind of green. He really was into video games. And then by the time we did Two Can Play That Game, he had gotten married. He was about to become a father and he had really turned into this man. I was like, you kind of sexy for real. It was it was just amazing to watch him evolve. And then now to see him at the time when this article was written on that show, Rosewood, he's gotten even finer. I'm like, damn, you like fine wine, baby. <laughs> he takes care of himself. And I appreciate him for that. Morris Chestnut was one of the best kissers. Well, actually, she said Morris Chestnut was one of the best kissers, child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and she's and i think she was on what watch what happens live with andy cohen and she was asked who her best on-screen kisser was and she re- reiterated that it was morris chestnut and she I said look at those lips, lips. <laughs> <laughs> exacto mundo and he knows it like even in jackie's <laughs> background like you know and he also like he references the ll cool j like licking of the lips but like morris chestnut's got his own thing going on there because he does in the best man and yeah 
even now, like the man is aging beautifully. He is fine, yeah. And he if I don't know if you guys have seen the best man TV show that uh, came out. Yeah. Yeah. The man was would not wearing a lot of clothes in a lot of those episodes. <laughs> and I was here for it. Yes. See, that was a prime opportunity for a little little sneak peek or something. Well, he is he's been married this whole time. So she said like so this movie came out 2001 so he's been married for so long i don't know if he's faithful but we haven't heard anything in the streets so i would like to believe he yeah. is so we meet keith shante is happy then she goes i think she goes back to go they go to dancing oh they go out for dinner Did right we skip connie oh oh when yes. she, okay when <laughs> the scene <laughs> the connie of it all my background one of the most iconic scenes in this whole damn movie we are introduced to connie spaldwin spalding played by gabrielle union and her ponytail was whipping whipping back and forth ariana grande who like right <laughs> <laughs> she is like walking in she got a slow motion walk we see Shantae checking her out and then just their exchange with each other is always so fucking hilarious yeah. you know, check up under your man <laughs> I, man oh my god and yeah. I think too the contrast in costuming like where mm-hmm. Shantae has this like really nice muted yellow suit and Connie is in this like really bright red and like a shortish skirt and just yeah I think she a little bit of a plunging neckline too <laughs> but like you know she infamously also calls her a hoe so like you definitely get corporate hoe from her outfit. <laughs> well they talk about in the, that interview I was telling you about that they did try to make it a contrast so when it came to figuring out what Connie's hair was going to be. She was like, okay, I just tried to do everything that was opposite of what Shantae slash Vivica was wearing. So she's like, Vivica wasn't wearing a ponytail that day. So I was like, let's get a high pony. Let's do it. Yeah. And Shantae is wearing more pastels, bright bright colors, while Connie is wearing, you know, a femme fatale kind of colors. She, I think she wore like a lavender dress, but it's very like tight and yeah, fitted to her body. So there was a very particular deliberate look for each character to make sure that they look like opposites. Not that you would confuse them, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I feel like Connie's character is a continuation of Gabrielle in Love and Basketball. <laughs> it's who she grows up to be. Because yes. <laughs> you know, in that movie too. What I, what I do love about this movie is that it's very true to a lot of Black people's experiences, mm-hmm. which is that some, t- you, you know, obviously we talk about code switching when we're at work. But a lot of the times that we're having our foots in very different places at times, you know, whether maybe you have your friends from your neighborhood and you maybe you went to college and now you're in like a high powered job and maybe they're still in the neighborhood. So like socioeconomic differences in your friendships, but you're still friends with them (laughs) kind of situations. So I like how they kind of showcase that because I think it's you see more of those i don't want to say disparities in between yeah their in social lives yeah yeah and they, I, they, maybe that's why deidre's her friend like she's <laughs> one of those you know from she, she did say she grew up in inglewood right so yeah maybe she's from the block and you know they're still just homies like she's like what's deidre up to these days but it's not <laughs> a deep profound friendship <laughs> But Tamala talks about how her character, like, she really felt like was kind of like a borderline hood. Like, she was, she had that yeah. hood adjacent situation going on for her. She was very easily able to jump back into it mm-hmm. with that character. So I thought I, I, I really did like that aspect of it. That it was not just something that happened, but it was a conscious effort that they all made. For these characters yeah so <laughs> where are we so we meet connie 
where and now her and um Keith are going to dancing or is she with her girlfriends at the bar? She's with her girlfriends at the bar. Well, so she I think it's Don't they two get separate her house. Scenes. They're at her oh, so they're at her house. They meet it's up at her like house. Girls night. Yeah. But they can't go out to dinner because she has plans with Keith. And yes, while yes. they're like kiki and laughing, of course, there has to be a dance number with each other, which is really <laughs> cool, cute. It made me feel like this waiting to ex- exhale moment. Yes, yes, yeah. So they're dancing, kiki and whatnot, and then they get a phone call. And I think Deidre or no, is it Karen? One of the friends answers the phone. And it's Keith that he is working late. So we had just gotten a whole spiel from Shante about all the different ways that you could start to figure out that your man is starting to creep. And the number one excuse that you get is that I have to work late. That is like a sure sign, sure fire sign that he's cheating. So when I feel like that's poor research. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We can't and I liked the montage of like all the other men like with their excuses and stuff like <laughs> that. Like, but yeah. those montages were the only realistic thing about this movie. <laughs> But yeah, I do think that there isn't a lot of nuance in this movie when it comes to like these rules and all this other stuff. So you kind of just have to take it at face value. But it also shows you how messed up Shantae is. Like clearly she needs therapy and (laughs) she's been hurt so much so that she's making all these rules and doing all these things because she can't fully, she has trust issues. She can't be vulnerable i'm not saying that the streets aren't real because it is but girl what yeah yeah she's also 28 so (laughs) yeah that's true (laughs) also another truth maybe that was why they chose that age because i was like it's not giving 28 (laughs) but But then explain the sequel because we know (laughs) our girl wasn't no 28 there's a sequel yeah three can play that game and I wish I have to watch. And I wish I never saw her at all. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so she's high. Her, her senses are heightened about okay. Keith is working late, and then they go to her favorite spot to go get some drinks and hang out. And sure enough, she likes to clear her head, according to <laughs> her best friend. <laughs> sure enough. Who do we see on the dance floor? <laughs> mm. Keith in his trifling ass with some high yellow girl from the office. Which is just a clumsy move to take yeah. somebody like that to the spot where notoriously her best friend said Shantae likes to go to clear her head about things. Why on earth would you take someone there? Like. Yeah. He should have texted. I don't know what. Like, so. There was no texting. <laughs> All right. You're right. <laughs> he Maybe a two-way at best. But he, a page. He, he really fucked up. And what I do love is Tony calls him out on this. Because he was like, dude, bruh, you done fucked up. Because secretly, you wanted to, you wanted to smash. 100%. You, your intentions were not pure. Come on. Come on, bro. And you got caught. Like, it's real rookie moves out here. But sometimes the really handsome guys have no real game because they never had to really do anything. Yeah. It's yeah. easy. So some t- those are the ones, those are the motherfuckers who really be getting caught up. And then they will look at you dead in the face and be like, baby, it's all right, all right? Because they think, <laughs> <laughs> they think they're so cute. You won't forgive them. Get out of my fucking house. <laughs> right now. I do like how calm she was. I feel like that would be me. It's just like going up like, hey, Keith, nice seeing you. And then. <laughs> I, if it was texting age, if I saw that with my girlfriends, I, I, I would be calm, but I would take a picture and text it to him. I would leave text it this to him you? and say, Working late? <laughs> you have fun? You having fun? You having fun? <laughs> this doesn't seem like work to me. 
Okay. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it is not that interesting. Or, oh, that's funny. <laughs> not I funny. would text him and be like, oh my God, baby, it's so crazy. So-and-so said that they went to my spot and they sent me this picture. And I was like, that can't be Keithy at work. <laughs> but I'm <gonna> work. <laughs> Because I know it ain't you, baby. I know it ain't you. <laughs> and my dad would have said in that situation, if you aren't physically walking up to me and touching me, I wasn't there. I don't care if you took a picture. That ain't me. <laughs> That's a man who does some stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. My dad. The, the wonder of Greg. <laughs> There is, I don't think there's ever been a man to really truly surprise me with shenanigans because they don't know who my dad was. They don't know. <laughs> there ain't nothing you have ever done that my dad hasn't done crazier. <laughs> okay. Those are the kind of women that guys stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> who have dads who... <laughs> Yeah, or like brothers, girls with brothers. Like, there's nothing you can tell a girl with brothers. Like, I've got four brothers, and they're all ridiculous. So, <laughs> so, <sighs> but now we have to enact the ten day plan. Uh, I remember watching this, thinking, <laughs> <laughs> "Idiot, idiot, Danielle." Take and I'm next. pretty sure, like, she goes, rule number one was never panic. Rule number two, never let your girlfriends know. But then I feel like at some point she says another rule number one. I'm like, girl, you don't even know your own rules. <laughs> she don't. <laughs> she don't know her own rules. She's, it felt very much like she was winging it. <laughs> she was. Okay. I was going to say, do you think she wrote these down somewhere? I don't. Think I so. found a site that wrote some of them down. Okay, okay. so day one what to do check your phone but do not call mm -hmm. they updated this for today so they put check your phone but do not call text whatsapp tweet him oh I, it, this no, is actually no, like a, 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 a guideline to life <laughs> and then it says why if he hasn't called yet it's not because he doesn't care he's just trying to think of a strategy whoever calls first loses ground so he doesn't call first because he goes to his homeboy, Tony's. Now, this is what is perplexing to me. And I'm, this is just my own thought process. Again, I my hypothesis is because this man is so handsome, <laughs> he has never really had to struggle in this situation. He's also mm -hmm. a dumb dumb, right? But he's also playing out of his league because this girl's cuckoo for cocoa puffs and he has no idea i think this whole time he has been thinking or perceiving her to be this sweet whatever she wanted him to believe mm -hmm. yeah. and so he's now like oh man i gotta call her i fucked up and this is when tony calls him out on that and now we learn that tony seems to be some Re fake relationship genius or knowing how to play women apparently and i'm looking at tony and i'm mm. like how is this possible <laughs> but there is a deleted scene where he says i don't need to know nothing else about women i have three sisters and a mama or some crazy shit that he yeah. says or whatever yeah. So here, this dumb dumb, I mean Keith, is sitting here listening to the man who has no girlfriend, no prospect for a girlfriend, no wife, nothing, tell him how to win back. And here's the thing: he's not even trying to win back, help him win back his girlfriend. He now is saying this is for <laughs> this. Is, he just wants to play the game. <laughs> it's it's yeah. for all the men. You can't let this chick win. Because it's going to set us back. Soon they'll be in our, we'll be in the kitchens and they'll be on the couch watching football. Like this whole diatribe. Tony thing. would have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Tony has a mic. A hundred percent. So he tells Keith, do not call. Do not call. Don't call. And so Keith's dumbass is like, you're right, you're right. Because by the time I call tomorrow, she'll be like, it's okay, baby. He's like, I'll just say what I can again, because he's thinking with hot brain. When you have hot brain, 
<laughs> you don't think regular rules apply to you because you've never had to try. You were hot in high school. Girls were doing your homework. Maybe you played on the football team. So people were just, you breezing through. You're breezing. You've never had to work hard. The biggest thing is that Shantae has standards. Yes. yes. And it's like, there are women who are in her position and all that stuff who don't have standards who would have happened happily been like he said that she you know was just a girl from work like it's nothing but she was like oh no you gonna be acting like this embarrassing me oh we gotta get you right together <laughs> she has standards she has money and she has resources <laughs> yes. and she needs therapy yes. if you put all of those together but also i think the other factor of this is it's not even just having the standards is that Shantae was embarrassed because again, mm-hmm. what we've established is that she feels in the hierarchy of her friendships that she is above her friends. And here she is giving all this advice like she's hot shit. And there these dum dums are eating it up. And now her sainted man is embarrassing her. Yep. Do you remember that lady with the low vibrational plate? That's who Shantae <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> she just keeps a bunch of people who are like oh my god she just is so and it's just constantly dogging them and talking down to them and be like see that right there i would never let somebody and little do you know she's letting somebody dog her or something's not right but <laughs> well i mean keep really like the moment that he got caught he should have left and went straight to her house mm-hmm. and begged for forgiveness. Because, like, obviously he didn't do anything, but his intentions were, like, not pure. Something yeah. wasn't right there. But I also think instead of them having, like, a real honest conversation, the problem is that they both started playing games. And also this was, like, a red flag for Shantae that Keith is not really trying to fully commit. Because yeah. if you're committed, why would you do something so stupid? Like, yeah, I think that's another part too. that, like, being that they might be like both 28 ish, like this might have been like his first like real because like when he after they had sex in the office, he tells Tony, he's like, you know, no one could ever make me get rid of like that woman. Like, you know, she's the best or whatever. And I feel like this is like probably the first time he's really had like that level of like, I like want to see this through with her right. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like she's marrying material. And given his hotness, he's probably had a lot of like, oh no, baby, whatever. Right. You know, and this this one though is like, again, she has standards next level crazy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I feel like Shantae could easily have become a, a, cult, a cult leader, leader. Yeah. with yeah. this strategy and just all of these women just looking for answers. Yeah. Like, She's hey, sprinkle, sprinkle. Fun- <laughs> or what the, oh my God, what what is that called? Not the soulmate. What Twin flames, those yes. crazy nutcases. Like if they could <laughs> get people to listen to them. She easily would have. Yeah. She is the low vibrational plate lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's all of that mixed into one. So he does not call her. Now, Shantae has silk pillows, but she does not wrap her hair. She does not put a scarf on and she puts her eye, eye mask on and goes to sleep. And I was like, hold on. This is a black movie, black cast, black writer, black director. And we ain't putting a bonnet, scarf, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Most unbelievable part of the movie. I've got a scarf hat under my face. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes to bed. She was like, all right, check it. He ain't call. Wasn't I was not prepared for that. Mm-hmm. Interesting move. Because this is not a Keith move. This is a Tony move. Yes. She should have been taken out, Tony. She should have known that your boo <laughs> is a dum dum. <laughs> you know Keith is not this bright okay so because think about it keith is hot but also keith was in law school he yeah. was nose in the book so he he's also like not maybe the brightest in the sense that like street smarts like. street smarts he's been in yeah. the books right so 
she got lucky, but then he got contaminated by Tony. So um, his man, <laughs> man, his man module got triggered, turned on, and now it's done. So I don't know. My she- favorite scene is the next scene where she's at church. And she turns the crazy up to 11. (laughs) What I love is that they bring up the fact that the people at church are like the worst. And it's so, I hate to say it, but it's so true. If you meet a guy, I, I, it's not all, but a good majority. If you meet a guy and he's like heavy in the church, run. Yeah. <laughs> not run <laughs> run because don't be the don't be the worst ones i'm just gonna say anywho so she goes to church and so she knows that she can she does make a point of the fact that men are sometimes the biggest gossipers Big, yes <laughs> and so she sees a guy that is friends or in the friend group of keith which also I'm a little confused and I'm wondering if maybe just like all of Keith's friends are work adjacent friends because usually hot people are with hot people. So I'm like, I have not seen, <laughs> I have not seen a hot friend yet. It's Where's weird. the brothers group? Where, where right. Are those Is there not, Where's Shamar Moore was busy? Right. Where is he? <laughs> like that should be the friend group with maybe a DL Hugo. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> so <laughs> not that I'm saying DL Hughley is is unattractive. No, but I'm, he's but, not. You know, but yeah. in that group, he stood out. You know, he's not slow motion fine. Like no. Yeah. Anywho, I digress. So she said that this plan is that if she rubs up or hugs up on somebody, she needs someone who's going to like go run tell that. So she hugs up on some guy, gives him a real good Christian hug, a long grind like hug. yeah <laughs> and so of course there's a guy that oh shit <laughs> gotta tell keith <laughs> keith doesn't go golfing because he's upset which shante called she said the first few days are easy for her but it's gonna be hard for him i don't know why that is but okay so she goes <laughs> she goes rubs up on him of course he tells tony what happens and so Tony has to tell her, hit Keith, that like, yo, Shante was rubbing up on some dude. Yeah. I do love that Tony was like, nah, that's not, that's not something she would do. Yeah. At first, <laughs> when the guy is like telling him. So I, I thought that was funny. And I think, he, he, does he call her? And she just, oh, he's he's calling her, but she's not answering. She has mm-hmm, not yeah. been answering her her phone. And we see voicemail, which God. An answer machine. <laughs> Talk about a. Mm. I kind of miss that. Yeah, it was always nice to come home and there's like you have three unread, unlistened messages. And blah, now blah, we blah. go out of our way to like not even respond to like a text, which is <sighs> like good. <laughs> like, when I get a voicemail on my cell phone, I am angry. <laughs> Why the fuck are you <laughs> leaving me a voicemail? Do you now they have mentioned? where you can read it. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, delete, delete, delete. Like, what is this? It gives no. me anxiety. I oh, mean, voicemail. so much about phones now give me anxiety. <laughs> but like, I thankfully, like, I have some voicemails from my grandma that I wound oh, up yeah. keeping. So yeah. like stuff like that, I appreciate. But like even vo- <laughs> notes, like messages. Yeah. Like, it has to be from the right person. But sometimes I'm just like, what on earth could you not text me <laughs> like you know to tell me I, this i have like, some friends that will record voice messages and i record i i do it too but in uh messenger you can do like 1.5 or two times speed so i'm like let's my whole life is like let me put it on two times speed, please. yeah <laughs> once i unlock that on tiktok i mean game changer oh, like what I know, yeah i don't now- I don't even, I'm like, oh, you're talking too slow. Our attention spans are so bad. It's so, so bad. Ken um, sent me a TikTok. He's like, why are you listening to it so fast? It's a slow burn. I was like, no, they're taking forever. I know that, slow burn. I know that I, I realized that I talk slow because even when I'm watching back the videos, like, bitch. And so I'm like trying to fast forward it so it doesn't sound 
to, you know, whatever. Because I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. <I do> that. <laughs> They're grappling for the mic in there. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, I know I do it too. Whatever. Manel millennial pause. <laughs> But we're losing too. Like I notice when I do it, I'm like I'm losing the art of storytelling because there are pauses and things that people are doing intentionally. Sometimes that like you're like, oh, it's emphasizing things. But I'm just like, okay, like what, where, what happened? What, where are we point? going but, with this? But some people are good at it and some aren't. Anywho, yeah. so <laughs> next day, Shantae's at work and she knows that he's going to call this time around and of course he does what i love about this next scene when she's waiting for him to call i was very surprised to see that david crumholtz i think that's how you say his name is <laughs> is just in it <laughs> i don't know if you're you know not familiar if you've ever seen the show numbers or if you're a big santa claus fan like myself he is the head elf bernard Bernard. <laughs> oh, is... I always think of him as Wednesday Adam's boyfriend at camp. Oh yeah, that's that too. <gasps> that's the same kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never connected that. <laughs> <laughs> so he plays her assistant Jason randomly. He's yeah. annoyed at her playing games. She's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <women."> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, but you've been waiting for his call because he calls, and she's like, tell him I'm busy. And I'm like, damn, son. <laughs> That's also a power move. Like, yeah. I, one thing I wish, which I guess do not disturb is our new, but like, there's no more like, let me call this person and hey, is so and so available? Really? Like, because there's no house phones, really. You can't right. be like, tell them, tell them not all. Like, <laughs> you know, so do not disturb is like your best bet. It's like, oh, oh no, I'm pushing this call through or something. <laughs> like that. But yeah, like, that's a boss move to be able to be like, I'm busy. I'm in another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so they, she plays some games with him where he does. She doesn't answer, and then she's like, "When you do answer, you make it short, quick, and you take it offline. Essentially, mm -hmm. you're gonna go meet in person." And so that's what she does. And Keith is like unprepared for all of this. Tony is trying to guide him. They go meet in a restaurant, and she is in control. She has very much Libra energy in this situation where she has the upper hand, 100%, and she wants it to be so. And she breaks up with Keith, and he is not prepared. He thinks that he just kind of fucked up. It's minor. Yeah. But she's like, no. Because it, it's hot guy brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's also kind of logical brain in a sense, like, okay, I, me I messed up, but, like, what? He does not yeah. see it coming. And her philosophy is that, she has to punish him, which I think is just like so unhealthy. Yeah. Just tell him that this will hurt your feelings or this wasn't good. Like if you're in a real relationship, you're not playing power struggle games here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because it should be, hey, well, he should have never done it in the first place. No. But like if he legitimately had to go somewhere with maybe a client after work or something, don't say I'm staying late at work. Like be very clear in what you were doing i have to take this female client out for drinks it is work related this is where i'll be you can come sit at the table next to me to make sure no nothing's got, like whatever not bumping and grind i know you ain't yeah. on that goddamn dance floor do they have cell phones in this movie no right no. the only caveat to that is that if he legit at the time was at work and it was just like, hey, I have to work late and that, that client thing was just taking longer than he expected or, you know, he an anticipated. And so he calls and says that. But then, you know, maybe they end early or whatever and, he, and the girl's like, hey, let's go, you know, you know, somewhere we could get drinks or food and something. He's like, yeah, I know a place. And so sans cell phone times, like, Shantae was already out. Do you call back and say, "Hey, like I'm going to go out now," like or I leave a message. Like you leave a message on my answering machine. So at <laughs> yeah. least there is proof the record, when you get yeah. home. 
that's the crazy thing thinking about like how this is still relevant or like dating is still <laughs> fucked up now because there's so many more avenues for better decision making <laughs> and it's just like I, no I'm gonna find a way to circumvent all this yeah what do you mean better I conversations you? yeah had. like it's very easy to communicate and still you're yes. fucking up <laughs> I'm telling you it's it's a mess I think um, it's human nature at this point. <laughs> I feel like he what he could have done, and again, we could have, we could have, would have, should have, but he already admitted to Tony that he had no, he had bad, poor intentions. Mm -hmm. He did, and if he, all he had to say to the girl was like, "Oh, you know what? We can go to my fav my girlfriend's favorite spot. She loves yeah. it." Or I gotta like, call my girlfriend and let her know that I'm gonna be at this place, you know, because yeah. then he would have, because the girl was like, "Who's that?" Yeah. Yeah, that that set part. expectations. Who's that? <laughs> like, Never what? mind. You thought I was. <laughs> I'm that. Shantae Smith, bitch. <laughs> right. I do love that she makes it clear that she doesn't have beef with the girl because mm -hmm. Deidre was like love ready that. to like I would have slapped the shit out of the her and the, <laughs> him, and she was like that girl didn't do anything. It's my dumbass man. Yeah, so she breaks up with Keith. Keith is devastated. He can't do anything, and she's like going about her life. She's mm -hmm. taking baths. She's going to the grocery. I love how she like glamorizes this real simple shit. She's like, "Go take a bath. Go to Victoria's Secret." I'm like, "Bitch, what? <laughs> so care your errands is what she's telling me to do." <laughs> He's a mess. Tony's trying to get him to get over it. They're watching football. They're doing whatever. She's going on dates. Mm -hmm. I am laughing at this because this is supposed to be 10 days. Shantae. Yeah, she was with these scum of the earth, but where was she finding these men so quickly without Ooh. dating apps? Her little black book. She had a man. She was. This is the most realistic part of the movie where she was going <laughs> on these dates and this man was rubbing his nipple ring Wait, that happened to you <laughs> like, i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying that what are you saying Daniel? <laughs> saying that going on bad dates was the most oh <laughs> realistic parts like the weirdos that she was going on dates yeah. with so yeah she goes on these dates and then he's such in a funk so tony tells him to do something so he shows up unexpectedly at her house and she was prepared that he might do this. And so we think the next day, because we see him and he's like real excited and happy, we think they slept together. But it turns out that he, I'm not mad they were trying to use physics terms and stuff like that. It's just the physics laws. He, he like started an argument with her and then left. So it was like a transference of it power. Be, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is shitty. It's such a <laughs> shitty thing to do to somebody. But it worked. It worked because she was real upset about it. Yeah. And she figured it out. She's like, Tran the transference of power. That shit works. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> uh, so she's upset. And I think the next thing that she does is she puts on, is that when she puts on the dress and she goes over to have sex with him? Mm. Or not to have sex with him, but to get him riled up. Let me see. Oh, they we're missing the part where they go up. She goes out dancing with the girls. And then Kevin oh, is yeah. also out, out dancing with Connie. Uh, oh, who's Kevin? Keith. Keith, sorry. <laughs> I did it this time. You did. Your first one. <laughs> Yes, Keith is grinding up on Connie, and that is pissing her off because that's like her arch nemesis. Um, so He's it's a bona fide hoe. <laughs> yeah, it's working. And then she goes to his house, and she gr wears her tight Versace dress, grinds up on him, and leaves. I can't. And then, <laughs> then leaves. So he's upset again. And so then Tony convinces him, look, you gotta you gotta leave this chick alone. There are so many ho biddies in the sea. <laughs> you you, you gotta go for it. And so, so he goes out with Connie. 
to a work event that Shantae is going to be at. And she is not prepared for this. No. And yes, she finally lets her crazy out because she's like, I, you know, she has words with him. And then she goes after Connie, which is like anyone knows that's a big no, no. You don't go after the girl. Like, come on. And I love that Connie's like, why are you is getting up me? in my face? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and I, I know that I, I fight for villains a lot, but I don't think <laughs> Connie is a villain. She's just living. The only thing know. is, like, if you know he has a girlfriend, like, and you know her, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but. Okay, but they're Danielle, not together. But, they broke up. No, no, but she was going after him while, like, he had just had sex with her, with Shantae in the office when Connie shows up rubbing up on him and being like, hey. But we never see that she's rubbing up on him, do we? Danielle, just put it. No, <laughs> I'm done. sorry. But put it in the perspective of if a girl was doing what Connie was doing prior to the breakup to one of your friend's boyfriends. Right. How would you feel? I beat her up. <laughs> so you know it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> She's Any- putting out the signals like right. when you want and when you can. Exactly. You get this. Which is crazy because honestly, he could have cheated. Like this whole situation could have started with her instead yeah. of that random other girl. But the but- problem is that Keith, <clears throat> that's his name, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got so, y'all. The, the problem is, <laughs> I was gonna. <laughs> Keith was never attracted to Connie. I think the only reason he's giving Connie the attention that he is is because of the situation he's in. Because one of the mm. things that he tells Tony is that she is so aggressive. She like he feels like she's going to eat him alive, mm-hmm. yeah. and he. I don't think he likes the thirstiness yeah. of it all. So I I think that's why he's been able to kind of avoid her. That other bitch that he was with was real timid, like, you know, yeah, up yeah, his alley. Yeah. She's the one that she needed to be watching out for. Yeah. Um, Keith just needed a weak moment, I guess you could say. <laughs> but yeah, so she loses her cool. Now, this is the part of the movie that I feel like this part of the movie is equivalent to... In the Fast and the Furious movies when they go into space. That's how <laughs> astronomically ridiculous this part of the movie is to me. Like Marley will enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Danielle's new barometer of how like bad shit crazy. How crazy. Yeah, it's the new jumping the shark, Jump the shark. Is <laughs> cars in space. <laughs> because I don't know, like she goes outside she busts her own tire crazy and she's trying to randomly find like how busy is this, is this street one i thought about that <laughs> and two because it looked residential right and so and two like what are the chances that you're gonna get a semi rich decent looking man yeah I what's his name you- I had a flat tire in the parking lot of a daycare where I worked <laughs> and it was during pickup time. It was like five o'clock. All the dads are coming in and out getting their kids. Not one of them offered to help me change my tire. The only person that ho- offered was shout out to Eve because I'm still friends <laughs> with her. She was the only one to like offer one of the moms. Wow. Damn. I had yeah, about I had 20 men walk by me. I don't I don't have those skills. If these breasts really aren't gonna do anything for me in this world, is that's it, what triple A is for. <laughs> and these triple D's are to get someone <laughs> to fix the tire. Well, I had put a call out to my triple A. Kenneth, but he was busy at work and couldn't get there for like an hour and a half, two hours. And I'm like, I'm not staying at work that long. I'll just change the damn tire myself. I, I have don't, the capability. Don't. 
Okay. So randomly a handsome, weird, I want to say they've got the oddest looking white man ever. And I want to say this is the comparison that whenever there are white people in non-starring roles in black movies, they always look so fucking weird to me. And it's the equivalent <laughs> to when I'm watching Korean dramas and then they have like Americans in them, but they're foreigners and they don't sound anything <laughs> like Americans. And I'm just like... Do other people in Korea think this is normal? Because it's not. It's <laughs> hilarious to me. It's so fish out of water. That's yeah. what this guy, Bryson, well, I don't know what his name was. And I was like. Looks like a Bryson. Yeah. He looked <laughs> like his face looks square. Literally. It was just yeah. weird. Yeah. Anywho, Shantae used him as a prop. And of course, Keith was in his feelings losing his fucking shit about this dude. Also, Tony's egging him on because she he's like, she's not over there just, you know, doing this. She's over there having deep conversation with him. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. It was oh, yeah. Man. Tony is the worst. Okay. <laughs> Tony is half the reason why he's in this situation. Yes. Yes. But then uh, Shantae doubles down because <laughs> it, not Kevin, Keith starts calling. <laughs> I should know Keith. My brother-in-law's name is Keith. I don't know why. Keith starts calling her on it and he, he's like, St- let's just stop playing games. Like, right. I know what you're doing. You know what I'm doing. So why are we doing it? And so she doubles down by <laughs> dropping a condom out of her purse. Fucks his shit up, she says. <laughs> And he loses it. He's like, what is this for? And come on, dude. How are you falling for this? How out of all the things in that tiny ass purse, it's just a random ass condom that falls out? What she should have did was have a Magnum condom. (laughs) That would have really fucked his shit. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) And that was a boss move. It was, (laughs) but he's like, if you leave here, like we're done. And so she like, it's like, whatever, I'm live me. I'm going to do me. And she really thinks that he's going to be at her house when she gets there. And I'm like, that's the fast and the furious Carson. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm like, at what point is he's like changing his mind? Like about something? Because this is just so toxic. This is so toxic because this is what toxic people do. They play fucking games with each other like nobody's got time for this and so he finally concedes and he's like whatever he does not show up she has a few red herrings the chinese food delivery man comes and wrong address and so she's like okay i'm gonna go back to my favorite spot Mm -hmm. and clear her head (laughs) and of course another girl comes to the bar and what i love is shantae is a girl's girl she Mm -hmm. is She's like, hey, girl, how's it going? She's like, oh, there's a fine-ass brother over there. He ain't paying attention to me, and I don't know why. That don't happen. Talking about his ex-girl, and she turns around, and it's her boo. Mm. And they are like, okay, let's let's give this another try. Apparently, the ending was a little bit more steamy between Shantae, Shantae and Keith, but test audiences found it too unrealistic, and so it was ultimately cut. From the oh, fuck if we if we could have had a shirtless morris chestnut scene fuck those test audience who, who was this <laughs> test audience was it like an old folks home right i don't know why am i not in test audiences <laughs> right I, they would kick me out immediately she got too many notes <laughs> I, <laughs> she can't remember their names i've right. only done one and it was a movie we actually have to do on the podcast it was Watch walking me. tall the 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 movie Duty with the rock oh. <laughs> oh we all had different we all had different <laughs> I was thinking about the movie with Reese Witherspoon about that country man walk the line oh. see I was I was thinking <laughs> about the spoof or not the spoof <laughs> yeah the spoof of that movie no it, it's the one with the rock where he has a big two by four in the casino oh never saw it. That, well, we that doesn't sound like a good movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and that is to play that game. Mm. We mm. know that it doesn't work out for these two, unfortunately, because there is three could play that game, and Morris Chestnut is not in that movie. And we find out that 
Keith. Is Vivica in it? Yes. Yeah. We find out Keith gets a job overseas and she, Vivica does not want to go unless they're married. And he's like, I'm not really sure about this. And he leaves. Mm. So Bam. this whole movie was. I got to watch nothing. that. I didn't know there was a sequel. Yeah. Anywho, they I shot- was like, wait, how do we get to three? Because we started that <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> we need the prequel. One can play that game. Where Bria had learned math. Math. All the- <laughs> this is when Shantae comes up with all the rules. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so they shot this film in five weeks. Did you guys catch the Monica cameo at the, the restaurant? She is one of the servers. For Keith and Shante at their date, not supposedly. <laughs> this is Lala Anthony's debut, as well as the her. director. Yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, with her original face, because you can't tell me she ain't done some stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> allegedly. Also, so we talked about like some of the wardrobes. Pay attention to the colors Shante and Keith wear. Through the film, Shantae often appears in bold, confident colors like red and yellow, while Keith tends to favor cooler tones like blue and green. The subtly, ref- subtly, hmm. subtly, 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 subtly. Well, why is there a B in there? <laughs> because it's the English language. Yeah. Oh, okay. This <laughs> subtly. <laughs> right. I know how to say this word. <laughs> This reflects their opposing personalities and strategies. I love his blue sweater. Yes. Yeah, blue looks very good on his skin tone. Like, those skin those tone. sweaters in the 2000s, the like muscly, like, mm. bring mm-hmm. those back. Yeah. Thank you. And bring those men back too. <laughs> yes, 90s fine is a totally different <laughs> subject. You can make a pot- whole episode on that. <laughs> <laughs> I do find it interesting that one of the debates that the director had with the executives at Sony was about Shantae's house. The argument was that there was no way Shantae would be able to afford that house. It could have been a similar house. And I said, no, I said, look, I want my movies to be aspirational. This is the director. You've seen guys in the ghetto driving a Toyota and I want her to drive a brand new convertible Jaguar. I want her living in a really, really nice house that bespeaks the level of success that she has acquired. I want it to be a social statement that even though the black woman's earning power is less than her white female counterparts and her male black counterparts, I wanted to see her not only exude power in what she says, but I wanted it to be subliminal impression that this woman is successful and there are successful black women around. So some of that was me trying to make a political statement with who she is and the condition of black women. And I find that funny because if you look at things today, if you saw that scene, it would not be weird. I When I watched that movie, I didn't think it was I didn't question it for a second. No, not at all. Yeah. And because there were black women living that experience at that time. Yeah, I yeah, because I'm like thinking back to waiting to exhale because like you know Angela Bassett like right, but she was a housewife in that movie. So yeah. and then but Whitney had the career and stuff. So but I don't think we ever really got to see like uh, the fruits of her career as much. Right, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I that's crazy to think like and thank you to that brother for making that choice because growing up and watching this movie like it made that like aspirational and normal to me. It's not out of like out of my grasp to have a luxury car and stuff like that. Like so, yes. Props to you, sir. That's one good thing he did in this movie. <laughs> Oh, the film originally writ- was written as a sequel to Jack Year, one of your faves, How to Be a Player. Um, it was previously titled How to Make Your Man Behave in 10 Days or Less. While the title got changed, the central premise is How to Get a Man Back in Line stayed the same. And the working title for the movie was Queen Bee um, before they settled on two complete I wonder if game. some white girl watched this and wrote How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. No, because I think that movie came out. For, oh, I don't know which one came out first. Two thousand three. Oh, maybe. You're right. I thought it came a little out inspiration, early. maybe. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. how to get your man back in ten days? That 
Like, that's yeah. wild to me, like, the 10 days of everything. Girl, like... you speaking on some over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any comments on our commentary <laughs> or want us to do another movie or whatever you want to tell us, hit us up at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Threads. And Bria, I'm going to start with you. What is your present day rating of this film? Why would I need this for two days? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> two day two day rental. Jackie, I'm Nothing. going same two day rental. Me, mm, I still own that bitch. <laughs> I cringe a lot rewatching it, and the funny thing is, I watched it last year again, and I don't remember cringing as much. I don't know if I was really paying attention, so I'm gonna move it to a five day rental because I think. I think it still makes me laugh because it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. You know? It holds it, up. And yeah. you're probably just mesmerized by Morris Chestnut. <laughs> I think I was more mesmerized by just like, I love Vivica Fox in this movie. Like, yeah. is her character toxic as fuck? Yes. But is she a bad bitch? Yes. <laughs> I think I'm more asked, like, I don't want to sound horrible, but like, I don't even really look at keith as a person in this movie <laughs> he is an accessory like she's my barbie doll and he's her accessory that's how i look at it in this movie yeah so, i because he i didn't role. see his chest in this movie <laughs> <laughs> was she in booty call with yes, yes. Jones? Mm-hmm. okay but can I just say one thing? Sure. We yeah. didn't talk about this, but I love the quote that it was like, vulnerability is the big dick of emotions. Like women love that shit. Like I was like, <laughs> I do love some vulnerability. That <laughs> top tier emotion. But <laughs> when a man is vulnerable? Just in general, like I've learned to like in friendship, like, you know, like that is uh necessity i feel like for me at this point because otherwise like wh- what are we doing besides being acquaintances like so, yeah 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 well if you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation hit us up at our quick drop 909-601-6653 uh you can either you can also twat us at the twitters hem us at the threads and you could be mm-hmm. featured on a future episode and Bria, it was so great spending some time with you and talking about this crazy ass movie. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm glad I did it and I pushed myself to do it. Or Danielle really pushed me. She's like, so what day really, works for you? Yeah, I didn't really give you a choice. I was like, you won't be on great. You didn't even say yes. I was like, I'm That's a pusher, no Katie. I push people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's always Danielle. <laughs> And as always, be kind and rewind.